Hey everyone, Steve and Amy from Samori, and this is the new M1 Mac. Hey guys, Steve and Amy here again, uh, Steve, Chief Product Officer from Samori, and uh, really excited to get our hands on the uh, M1 Mac that just came in, which Amy is now modeling for us, and, and again, Amy's one of our software wizards um, that you may have talked to an email or on the phone, um, here to help you. So we're just going to quickly go over our first uh, impressions of the M1 Mac from a forensic perspective and what we've learned so far. Um, just to let you guys know, we already had the Apple Development Transitional Kit, which is the one that's sitting over here, which you can't see off camera. But it's basically a Mac Mini that had the first Apple Silicon processor in it that we could use to actually start work on development. But it was kind of um, somewhat helpful. I'm going to say not too, too helpful mm -hmm. because the problem was the development transitional kit that Apple gets with the proper Apple Silicon chip, which we'll talk about here in a second, um, was um, throttled. And I mean throttled in the sense that the Thunderbolt ports weren't working, um, it was very buggy, things were unstable. So we were trying to test all of our forensic tools that we have and get it ready um, for the new Macs that are coming out, which they named the new M1 chip. Um, and uh, we did the best that we could. So we finally got one in our hands about two days ago and we've been using it and abusing it um, since then with our tools to try to figure out everything is um, pretty nice about this thing. So there's a couple of things we, we wanna talk about. So one, let me just explain if you're not uh, familiar with Max and what's going on. So Max used to be back in 2006, um, they, they announced that they were changing from the PowerPC processor. We're going way back to the Motorola days. And then they switched over to the, what chipsets? To... Current ones. Current ones? Intel. Intel. Yeah, Intel. Yep, Intel. And then we're going to... The T1. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the T1s. T1 chipset. So, yeah, they switched over to the Intel chipset. And then now they're switching over again to the Apple Silicon. So Apple's making their own chipsets. So they were using Intel's before, and now they're gonna go back to using their own stuff, which is kind of structured around an ARM type processor. Um, what that means for you guys, and, and what it meant before back in 2006, is that they completely reversed the way that they process the data through a chip. So it's back to your big Indian, little Indian stuff, if you guys know all that, if you remember those from school, right? So it's reversing it again. So what that means, if you have any programs that are written for one instruction set, it's not going to be compatible for this one. So what does Apple do? They included something called Rosetta. So back in the old days, they had the original Rosetta, and now they have Rosetta. Rosetta too. So it actually translate any Intel instruction sets on the fly so everything will still work. So what does that mean? So what is native to an Apple Silicon Mac? Well that's going to be the Apple Catalyst um, programs. So using Catalyst to actually, I'm sorry, not Catalyst, Universal 2. Universal 2, we'll get to Catalyst later. Mm -hmm. Universal 2 um, to actually work for both um, Apple Silicon and Intel. So it's an instruction set that you can use from Apple that if you program it in Universal 2, it'll work for both the Intel Macs and the Apple Silicon Macs. Um, if it's Intel Mac only, which most programs in the world are right now, um, it's going to do translation or emulation on the fly. So that brings you to speed with these new Macs, right? So that's pretty impressive. So Apple did something really unique in that it put the RAM that actually you would have usually separate, like on the board somewhere, or you know you install it separately, inside the actual chipset itself. So what does that mean as far as speed goes? Well, speed and power and heat are all increased and slash reduced because the actual RAM is included in the chipset, mm -hmm. so there's no buses to actually go through to get to the RAM and process and send it back, so you get a dramatic increase of speed. So that's been pretty impressive what we've been seeing in using it and also on the benchmarks, um, like Geekbench for example for Mac, where single core processing, this Mac right here with the M1 chipset, is number one for single core processing. Multi-core processing, it's up there with the Mac Pros. Mm -hmm. So some of the early Mac Pros. So it's pretty impressive and the price dropped. So now that Apple's making their own um, processors, the price has dropped. So what you get, like this one right here is the maxed out MacBook Pro 13 inch um, and it's got 16 gigs of RAM, which is the max that you can get. And it's one of the fastest Macs in the world right now, 1500 bucks. $1,500 US is what you can get this one for. Um, and you can bump it up more if you know it's gonna be more expensive if you add more storage to it um, But we just got the bare minimum for what we do because we use a lot of external storage We just want it to run the OS and stuff 
Um, so what does that mean for forensics? It's it's awesome. We we offer bundles in the U.S. only, right? We offer bundles where we sell the Mac with our bundles of, of Recon uh, Lab and Recon ITR. So what this means for us right now is if you order the Mac Mini with the same M1 processor in it, there's no difference. We can get you a Mac Mini maxed out with all of our software for forty. $400, $4,300? Yeah, $4,399. $4,399. There you go. $4,399. So that's um, quite a lot off from the other price that we had. If you want the MacBook Pro that we have right here, we can get you all of our software, like all the software that we make with as far as processing a Mac and Windows and everything else for less than $5,000. So for $4,999, right? $4,999. There you go. <laughs> So you get a MacBook Pro along. So there's no more excuse that I don't have a Mac to do uh, processing because you can get it. And what we're charging for these bundles with all of our software they need for imaging, triage, uh, a Mac plus full forensic analysis suite and the hardware itself is less than some of our other competitors like single price for one of their tools. It, it's a no brainer. So again, not trying to dissuade you from buying other tools. It's just use the best tools for each. And that goes back to like using a Mac for a Mac. So this is where things get really tricky the security so security has increased um on these new macs um a lot of things have went away and being native is the way to go so i always say use a mac to do a mac i keep saying i'm going to die with that as an epitaph um, on my tombstone uh, it's even more true today so with these new m1 macs you're you're really swimming upstream if you're trying to do this in something else that's not with a mac or mac native solution like ours and so what I mean by that is these M1 chipsets themselves and the T2 chipsets that come in now, you have the basic kernel level security, you have hardware level security, mm -hmm. you have software level security all built into this, plus Apple's proprietary file system, the APFS file system, which they now have also split up into two more partitions where you have a system partition, which is read only, and a data partition for readable user data that can only be combined together on a Mac to actually get you what you need. I don't know what else to tell you anymore. You, you need to stop trying to force this into like the round peg into a square slot or whatever, or square peg into a round slot. Mm -hmm. I don't know those things you used to play with when you were a kid. So yeah, you're literally trying to, to do something that's not designed to do it. Remember, Apple stuff is proprietary. It's, it's highly proprietary. Um, even though it was based on like Unix type technologies, it's highly proprietary and they're trying to it's just hard to do it in anything else. But using a Mac to do a Mac, Mac supports itself, everything just runs nice. And the way that we approach what our solutions for, for getting you data and getting you the information you need is to let the Mac do what it does natively and, and actually then pointer tools to what the Mac does. So it's it's not a genius type thing, but it is kind of genius because we're, we're doing it the easy way where everyone else is trying to reverse engineer and do it the hard way. We don't have to. So we can also, um, literally from what we learned in the last couple of days trying to, to process this thing and image it, we can make those adaptations very quickly on the fly and we're in progress of doing it right now. So as soon as we get everything done, um, we'll, we'll release another video and show you what we got. But that brings us back to, so what are you going to do if you if you get one of these things what are you supposed to do well first of all the very first thing i'm going to tell you to do is when you're on scene you need to ask for something and this is going to be super important and i'll explain why so when we're on scene you're supposed to ask for the user's password you need the user password you, yeah, she looks see how sad she is it's like if you don't have the password you're going to be so sad so the thing is you got to get the password without the password you're dead in the water there's nothing that you can do if you don't have the password i don't know what else to tell you if you don't have the password it's a doorstop or now we can use it for a um frisbee frisbee yep frisbee is good um, yeah frisbee doorstop is the best we come up with so, but literally, they're they're cute. You know, it's a nice decoration piece of aluminum. You can recycle it. But there's nothing you can do. You can't take it to Apple. We've had people call us already and go, "What can I do?" There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can't do. So remember, the the data itself is actually encrypted on disk. It's got to pass through that T2 chipset in order to come out to something readable. In order to do that, you have to have it. So now, option. We're used to holding the option key for this. Um, actually like max right to actually put into boot options there's no more booting it into anything so that's the first thing that we've learned it there's another way of doing this which is holding down the power button to get your options okay you hold it down so the only thing you can boot this to is a completely licensed version of mac os that is unmodified so that leads me to the next thing which is what about bootable imagers um i mentioned this before and everybody laughed at me um it, no bootable images as I can see as of right now. So we'll continue testing. Remember, 
Apple's not finished releasing updates. Mm -hmm. Literally the day that we got this, as soon as we turned it on, there was an update. So Apple, even shipping this out in two days, um, basically had updates that were available. And they're going to continue because it's still a lot of um, instability and things that they have to fix um, actually in this Mac. So that being said, try not to update unless you have to. So try to hold off updating unless you have to. Now, if you're using our software and you get a Mac OS 11 um, Mac, you're going to have to process a Mac OS 11 for what we do. So, but I recommend doing dual boot. So dual boot, um, keep your old operating system, create a new partition, and then load your Mac OS 11 in a new partition until it becomes more stable. Then switch your stuff over from the old uh, uh, 1015 over mm -hmm. to Mac OS 11. So that's what I usually do every single time a new version of Mac comes out because it takes a couple releases of new versions before um, or updates but before things get fixed. So what are we going to do with this thing? So if you get one of these things here, you're going to get the password. And once you have the password, what about imaging? Um, that's going to be interesting. So let's, for example, because guess what? No target disk mode anymore. So M1 Max, um, Apple Silicon Max, whatever you want to call them, uh, no more target disk mode. So you can't hold down the T key and put it into something that you can image. It's done. So bootable imagers seem to be not working right now. So what, what else is left to do? That's where we came up with ITR a long time ago, and we added support for this a long time ago. So we've already supporting imaging the M1 Max, and we built that into the system quite a long time ago so that when you run into the situation, you can image. So we have a many different ways inside Recon ITR running Imager Live from ITR to image these M1 Max and get your data. Um, so there's also one more method which I want to talk about. So running live from the desktop using actually like um, Recon ITR, we can get stuff. There's another method that I'm trying to figure out why you would use it. If you already have the password, it wouldn't be my first choice, but it's called Mac sharing mode. So Thunderbolt went away um, and target disk mode went away, or not Thunderbolt, sorry, target disk mode went away. What is replacing target disk mode? It's something called Mac sharing mode. So Mac sharing mode is literally a, a Samba connection between two Macs. Now that's the key word right there, between two Macs. It has to be another Mac using the USB 3.0 cable or 3.1 cable or the Thunderbolt cable that you can use. Um, and it uses a Samba connection. It can be done. We've done it. We've imaged with it. Um, it works. It's just slower. Okay, it's a little bit slower. Um, there's also some other stuff that we can talk about in other videos because this is getting pretty long, but it's what you image and what you get. So the, the, the method is to preserve as much information. When you're copying things logically, so anything passed through a T2 chipset is technically coming out logically, um, you want to be able to preserve the timestamps and the extended metadata. So, and because Apple uses extended metadata timestamps, not POSIX timestamps, which again, we're the only tool in the world with Recon Lab to actually fully support that in its interface and extracting this data and processing it. And we do some special things during imaging these Macs to actually retain that information. So um, when you load into Recon Lab, you have access to all of it. So you don't really want to process your evidence using the wrong timestamps, which is what happens when you use any other tool. So unless you're using a Mac to do a Mac or our tool to do a Mac, you're going to be wrong or incorrect in your timestamps. So you have to be really careful about that. So we're working on the Mac sharing mode. We've got it working here um, within Samori headquarters. Um, we're going to be implementing it as just an additional solution to, to put into the imagers. So new things are coming every time. We're releasing new updates um, constantly. And we're going to do so. We're trying to match um, our updates with what Apple's doing with their updates. Because every time Apple forces got a new update, especially quickly now and, and sooner, is because there's a lot of things still to be fixed and there's a lot of things that um, are, are not available to do until they make changes. So as soon as they make their changes, we make our changes. Um, so definitely stay tuned on the updates. Uh, we made it easier for the updates if you go and download our updates as well, um, if you're a, a user, where you'll see a folder that says older versions and then there'll be just one um, current uh, download for, for our current software when you get into our repository. So it just should make it a little bit easier so you don't accidentally grab the wrong one. Um, definitely uh, stay in contact with myself or Amy or the rest of the team here. Um, if you need any help with a Mac OS 11, I, again, I highly suggest make sure you get a password um, when you're dealing with these M1 Macs. Um, definitely apps, um, try not to update your system completely to Mac OS 11 um, without, you know, 
doing a partition, right? So do a partition, have one Mac OS 11 and keep one Mac 10, 15. That's the best way to do it. Um, and then as far as buying one of these things to process, absolutely, absolutely. These things are incredible. They're cheaper. There's no excuse anymore um, for not having your own Mac. Um, at, the, at the minimum, you know, if you get the lowest end Mac model right now with Mac mini with the M1 chip, which remember, it's the fastest Mac in the world right now in some areas. The processors is the same in the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and then the MacBook Pro. It's all the same processor. It's the same speed. Just a little different tweaks here and there. The maximum you're going to pay with ours is like uh, 1500 The lowest you can pay and get away with is like 699 So it, it's, it's, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. So I think that kind of covers it for this um, video quite long, um, but I want to get this information out. We'll be releasing some more videos as we go and show you what we can do with our tools. We're really excited about um, the fact that, you know, being native makes it easier for us to adapt and switch over and get your data into image in the process. Um, if there's anything you need, please reach out to us. We hope everybody's safe and healthy and thanks for watching.